Hi, we're going to talk about how to update your products using Amazon S3 without a plugin. You're just using a straight link from Amazon S3. So I have this test product here. And as you can see, this product has already has a Amazon S3 link. And if I'm under my account, you can see it right here. So I, I want to show you a couple things that you just need to know about. If you have this link here and you remove it completely and you update, the buyer loses access. If you add another one, so I'm going to click update and you would expect that the buyer automatically receives this. Unfortunately, that is not the case. If I go to my downloads, you'll see nothing is added here. Then you have to go into your orders and click choose action, regenerate download permissions. And right now, you have to do that individually on the order. So now you'll see that that should pop up right down there. Yep, added. Now the great news is, and I'm gonna show you, if I download that, it's just this little test PDF that downloaded great. Now the good news is, if you just keep this line item but change either one of these, it remains in the customer's account. So I say, once you've created this line item, leave it as is. So I'm gonna do, let's just call it changed, and I'll do just a different download. So this time I put in a zip file, I'm gonna click update, and you'll see under my downloads, this time the button changed to changed, and when I click it, you'll see the zip goes down. So that is good news, is that if you keep the same line item, you do not have to go in and regenerate permissions. If I was to add, if I was to add a line, and we'll just go back to that PDF. If I was to add a line, once again, it's not gonna show until you've regenerated permissions. So here it is, nothing's changed here. But if I go to that particular order and click regenerate download permissions and update, then under my account, that second line appears. So again, deleting it automatically updates the order. Adding one does not update the order. Just changing the line item that was already there does update the order. I know that's a bit confusing. So as a general rule, I try to say, don't ever press that X button unless you want to have to go in and regenerate permissions. I would just change this or you can, you know, leave it the product name and then you can change this link as you want and it will automatically update. So I'm gonna go ahead and just update that to product name and you should see because I kept one of the line items but deleted another, that should delete and this should change to product name. All right, now let's talk about how to update it on Amazon S3. So you're gonna go ahead and log into your S3 account and I'm gonna go ahead and create a bucket so I can show you the name of the bucket because I don't want to show the name of my client's buckets. The easiest way to create a bucket that you know will work is just copy settings from an existing bucket. You do want to unclick block all public access. I acknowledge. So you can choose to disable or enable bucket versioning. That just keeps a copy of everything that you've done. You will pay for bucket versioning. If you have your product somewhere other than Amazon S3, then you probably don't need bucket versioning. I'm assuming that this is not the only copy of your product. So for now, I'm just gonna leave disabled, leave everything else as is. I'm gonna click create bucket. Most likely you're not gonna to need to create a bucket. I'm just creating one so that I can test. So go into your appropriate bucket. So for testing purposes, I've uploaded a PDF, a zip and a folder. I wanted to upload a folder to show you that you can upload a folder, but it is literally just for organization purposes. You can't actually link to a folder. So for example, I tried to link to the name of the folder and I got the name of the folder basically from grabbing the name of a link within the folder. And so you see my testing PDF shows up. And then if I just try to link to the folder, it says access denied. So folders are only used for organization. You can't actually link to a folder. So if most of the time people just upload the zip file or the PDF. So now we're gonna update this product and let's say that I have a new PDF. So I have this new PDF that I've just made and it's right here and we'll call this testing new. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over here and you can just literally drag your files here and you can drag multiple files. And I've already talked about what bucket versioning is. I'm gonna to go to additional upload options and I'm gonna scroll down here to where it says access control and you need everyone to be able to read it. 
and you understand the changes and you come down here and you're just going to click upload. It'll say upload successful and then you can just click back on your bucket and you're going to see your new document here. So I'm going to go ahead and click my new document and then I can grab the object URL and I'm just going to copy it and then I'm going to go to my product. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to click update and again, I already have my order here. So now the customer can reload the page and now when they download it, you'll see it's the new PDF. It should have a big purple new on it. There it is. And you can do the exact same thing with a zip drive. So I'm going to go back to my bucket. Let's say we have two files we want to do. I'm going to zip those together. I'm just going to compress. We'll name my zip file. And again, I'm just going to upload my zip file. Go to additional upload options. Come down here, make sure it's read. It'll give you a little warning. Click I understand. Click upload. And then I can go back to my bucket. And there's my new product zip. I'm going to copy it and you edit whatever product you're on, paste it, update. And as long as you're editing the same line item, you don't have to do anything else. It will automatically be updated underneath that teacher's account. So now when I download that, that should be my new product zip. If you want to delete some of your old products, you're going to go to that bucket. And just make sure that you're deleting the right thing. So I know I don't need that folder anymore and I don't need my old testing PDF and I don't need my old ar archi archive zip. So I'm just going to click delete and you have to type in permanently delete in the field, click delete objects and it'll tell you successfully deleted. You can go back to your bucket and see what's left. And the reason why you would want to delete old products that you're not going to serve anymore is that, Amazon charges you a fee for just having the products on their servers. It's a very tiny fee, but they still charge you. So I just go ahead and keep it, keep it cleaned up, especially if you don't need anyone to have access to that link anymore. That is how you update your products with Amazon S3 with a link.